Well, greetings, friends around the world. Uh, it is a rainy day today. The first time the rain has been pouring after two months of terrible drought here in Europe. Well, that has reminded me of Maim Chaim, or the living waters, because uh, the living waters comes from heaven, of course, as a blessing from God, because the rain is coming from heaven, and that's what in the Bible we read in Hebrew as Maim Chaim, as the living waters. You certainly remember that God himself and uh, his truth and his spirit are likened in the Bible to waters. Uh, you might also remember that uh, it says, uh, the, uh, O hope of Israel, uh, those who uh, stray away from you are straying away from the living waters. Hope of Israel, or the in, in original Hebrew, it is mikve Israel. So the the, the 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 you know the hope of Israel is mikve. It is being immersed into the waters. The mikve is the Old Testament precursor of the New Testament baptism. So what did the Bible says about baptism? Well, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. That's Jesus' command. That's what he commanded his disciples in Matthew 12, chapter 28, verse 19. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, this plain direct command of Jesus Christ certainly sounds simple enough, doesn't it? Yet, surprisingly, today, more than 2,000 years later, the varying opinions about the proper methods, reasons, symbols, age, for, and words said that baptism are you know, legion are, are, are matters of dispute. But the incredible need to properly understand this topic is greater in our sinful age than ever before. For every single one of us, in the clearest terms, uh, you know, has been commanded to be baptized upon meeting the qualifications. As Acts chapter 2 verse 38 directs, repent and be baptized every one of you. Now, how can we be properly baptized unless we understand this important doctrine of Jesus Christ? Happily, in spite of the utter confusion surrounding this subject in religious circles, the biblical truth about baptism is plain and clear. Now, the basic Bible doctrine is this. Water baptism is the ceremony by which a mature person is immersed quickly under water upon proper repentance and belief, accompanied by the proper words, in a symbolic burial of the sinful man and raising of the new, as a show of faith in the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Those who undergo a proper baptism are promised forgiveness of sins and receipt of God's Holy Spirit. Now, of course, as always, the usual teachings of this world are diametrically opposite from what the Bible teaches us. Certainly, many religionists would disagree with the simple definition above, even though each part can be proven from the Bible. Something, for example, that children and even infants of only a few days old should be baptized. Others do not believe in immersion of the baptizee, but rather consider sprinkling or pouring of water over the person to be sufficient to baptize properly. A few have even misunderstood one biblical verse to conclude that they, they may and even should be baptized for the dead, meaning to them that they may be baptized in place of and for the benefits of a deceased person. And finally, some misunderstood and misunderstand even to this day John the Baptist's words that Jesus Christ would baptize with the Holy Spirit, Matthew chapter 3 verse 11, thinking this means this Christian, that Christians will speak in an exciting gibberish that they mistakenly call tongues. Clearly, the confusion needs to be wiped away. Wiped away how? Well, by the Bible teaching. The Bible teaching, dear friends, we should review the clear command that we be baptized, which states in part, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Or the Holy Spirit. This is in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Now further we should compare that verse with Romans 8, 9. Which states dogmatically. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ. He is not his. The conclusion is astounding. If we are not baptized. We do not receive the Holy Spirit. Yet if we do not receive the Holy Spirit. We do not belong to Jesus Christ. And proper baptism therefore is essential. The word baptize comes from the Greek word baptizo, which means immerse or plunge into. Since the word baptize means to immerse, to say that sprinkling or pouring means to baptize is a contradiction of terms. Sprinkling or pouring is not immersing and therefore is not baptizing. Besides, those who would say it is proper to sprinkle or pour ignore the plain examples of 
in the Bible. We have plain examples of the Bible how baptism was conducted. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 13 through 17, Jesus himself was baptized in the Jordan River and had to have been immersed for he, as it says, came up from the water. Likewise, John baptized in Ionon because, you know, there was much water there. John chapter 2, chapter 3, I'm sorry. So it's John chapter 3, verse 23. John the Baptist wouldn't have needed much water for mere sprinkling or sprinkling or pouring. Again, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, verse 36 to 39, they traveled to where they could find enough water to go down into. But what does the immersion of a person under water symbolize? Well, Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4 and verse 6 explains. And here we are reading that passage, Romans 6, verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of you as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin or slaves of sin. So you see, baptism is a symbolic burial of the old sinful self. A new person intent on obeying God in every way comes out of the water. Baptism is therefore an outward statement by our actions of the inward determination to obey God and leave our sinful past. But it is even more than this, for as Paul explains in these verses, our baptism is also a subtle picturing of our faith in the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ. By acting out his death in our baptism, we show our acceptance of his death, of his death's meaning in our life. The result of baptism in our spiritual lives are the forgiveness of our sins and the subsequent receipt of the Holy Spirit, as we have read in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Now, the actual process of forgiveness through Jesus' blood is called justification. And although proper baptism is prerequisite to receive, to receipt or to receive of the Holy, to receipt of the Holy Spirit or, and to, or to receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is actually received in an associated but separate ceremony called the laying on of hands, performed immediately after baptism, or to be more clear, perhaps, performed immediately after being immersed into the water. Forgiveness of sin and receipt of the Spirit do not come to us automatically. No, there are qualifications one must meet before baptism. The first of these is repentance, chapter 2 of Acts, verse 38. Repentance is the abhorrence of past sin and the sinful self and the decision to obey God in the future. The second qualification is belief or faith, as we read in Mark chapter 1 verse 14 and 15, in Acts chapter 8 verse 34 to 37, and in Mark chapter 16 verses 15 and 16. The faith required by a person at baptism is our own human faith rather than the faith of Jesus Christ in us, which we receive after baptism by His Holy Spirit in us, as we read in Galatians chapter 2 verse 16. The faith is toward Christ. Read that in Acts chapter 20 verse 21. And the faith is a belief in who and what Christ is, in His message, the true gospel, and in His sacrifice and through it. Now we can begin to see why an infant or even teenager should not be baptized. Children are simply too young to understand the deep symbolism or to assume the responsibilities of such a decision. And certainly, the living attitudes of mind required for proper baptism preclude anyone being baptized on behalf of a deceased person. Finally, proper baptism requires the proper words be said. Confusion has a reason about whether we should be baptized in the name of Jesus or in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, we should indeed be baptized, as it says in Acts 2, verse 38, in the name of Jesus Christ. But this phrase merely means that the person who does the baptizing, usually uh, an elder is doing baptism not on his own authority, but by the authority of Jesus Christ. In addition, we should be baptized 
as it says in Matthew 28, verse 19, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well, this is the wrong translation. It's not in the name, it is within. Because the Greek word for in here would better convey the sense of translated into. You see, we're baptized into the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Meaning, we are being initiated into the family of God. We are baptized not into a denomination of men, but through receipt of the Spirit into the body of Christ, which composes the church, as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13. Now, a few words must be said about John the Baptist's statement in Matthew 3, 11, that Jesus would baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now, this merely refers to the actual receipt of the Holy Spirit after baptism in the laying on of hands ceremony. Secondly, the sometimes held belief that baptism with the Spirit is the overpowering durations and gibberish that some people call tongues is mistaken. In my uh, message, short message about the tongues question, you have more information on this subject. Now, of course, here are a few main scriptures that help explain baptism. First one, Hebrews 6, verse 1 and 2. Uh, this passage shows baptism is a basic doctrine of God's church. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 shows baptism is commanded, that it should be in Jesus' name, that repentance is required, that it is for the forgiveness of sins, and that receipt of the Holy Spirit will follow after laying on of hands. And then Acts chapter 8 verse 37 shows that belief is required for baptism. Romans 6 verses 1 through 6 shows that dual meaning of baptism as the burial of the old self and the analogy of Jesus Christ's sacrifice. Matthew 3 verses 13 through 17 shows that baptism is by complete immersion in water since Jesus Christ himself, after baptism in the Jordan River, came up from the water. Matthew 28 verse 19 shows that the church should baptized, and that baptism is into the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, or actually, and that baptism is into the Father, into the Son, and into the Holy Spirit. And uh, we have some other materials that thoroughly explain this topic, including, you know, various facts and subjects. In conclusion, dear friends, yes, baptism is the most important subject, and although... Through the last 2,000 years, many religions have professed to baptize properly and have not. Baptism is accurately understood today by God's true church and done exactly as Jesus commanded. Until next time, all the best and consider baptism is the most important decision in your life. All the best until next time. Goodbye, friends.